What's going on, Vikes? In today's show, we have an update on the NBA 2K March Madness Tournament and a really cool story on our girls' basketball team. I'm Cade, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform. Finding character. And giving others a voice. This is SVTV. The school board is having a meeting to talk about graduation requirements, lunch money refunds, and a new learning plan. This will be live streamed but not open to the public, so check it out. The link will be in the description below. Washburn Tech students need to make sure they are watching their emails daily. Your instructors will be giving information on how your class will be online, and on Mar I, sorry, on March 23rd, you are required to log on to D2L. Washburn will provide a computer if you need one. It's been boring around here since no one can play their spring sport, but the basketball season for the girls was cut short as well. And they take it once again. On to Emporia. Steep bound for the Lady Vikes. A story of ups and downs was what the 2019-20 season was like for the Seaman High School Lady Vikes. The team had dreams set high for another state run this season. After beating Blue Valley Southwest in the sub-state finals, they knew they were destined for a state championship. Being with them all the time is something so special and it's something I'm going to miss like for the rest of my life. It's going to feel like you know, in order to achieve something great, you have to practice it. And it was a serious moment and we knew we had the team to do that. And we've been a confident bunch all year, especially during this 14-game winning streak. After beating Mays High School in the state quarterfinals, the Vikes celebrated accordingly. But little did they know, this would be their last game this team would play together this season. Headed in the locker room, we were all so crazy, we were so hyped, we were chanting. <laughs> At halftime of their game, the Kansas High School Athletics Association decided to cancel the remainder of the tournament. Two minutes later, he literally came in and we're like, Tinsley, like, are you joking? Like, why are you being so serious? I just remember him telling us, like, you know, life's unfair. And, like, he, he's like, I know nothing I say right now is going to make this any easier. They took our heart this year, and they captured our hearts this whole season. And we're very proud of what they accomplished. Like I said, in my eyes, we're the state champions. So when we get back to school tonight, Mr. Monahan, we're going on to the main court. And we are cutting down the nets. A decision was made, and emotions were high, but the girls knew what they had to do. Cut down the nets. All of our student section came and cut down, or watched us cut down the nets at midnight, and so it was really special. It was just cool to have like everyone like behind us, like supporting us for this like special moment. And that, that's a moment that they'll cherish forever. This decision was very hard for some of the girls to accept especially for senior Chloe Carter. This has been our goal since seventh grade when we started playing together to get to the state tournament to win a state championship. And we had the girls to do it and it was really emotional because I knew that was my last time on the court with my best friends. This tragic story has caught the attention of many local news outlets and even Sports Center. For one of your SC snap submitted senior sendoffs, Topeka, Kansas and the Lady Vikes basketball team. They had their season cut short mid quarter final game with every intention on making and taking state for the first time in 19 years. Many of these seniors playing together since elementary school and they've had their sights set on cutting down the nets since then. They celebrated their undefeated season accordingly after their final win. You know, trophies collect dust, but the memories that we made this season will be forever in our memory. That was a very sad but inspirational story on how to make the best of a bad situation. Thank you, Aaron. The commissioner of the NBA 2K March Madness Draft, Justin Cruz, is here to inform us on what's going on with this tournament. We had an exciting draft night last night for the SVTV NBA 2K tournament. The draft order was selected by a lottery where everyone was put in a fair playing pool and they were picked randomly. So the first pick overall to little surprise was the Los Angeles Lakers, chosen by Landon. Then the next pick was the Rockets, then Bucks, Warriors, Clippers, Nets, Jazz, 76ers, Trailblazers, Knicks, 
Celtics, Pelicans, Raptors, Nuggets, Grizzlies, Mavericks, Heat, Timberwolves, Magic, Hornets, Hawks, Pacers, Thunder, Phoenix Suns, Wizards, Spurs, Cavs, Pistons, and finally, the Kings. Um, so an exciting draft that we had, you know, getting the tournament started right. And so some of the rules for the tournament are every game will, play, will be played for, with four quarters of six minutes apiece, all-star difficulty for every game. It is a best two out of three uh, game style, and it is a double elimination 32-man bracket. So anyone can win, even if you've lost a game. So starting off the tournament right, we already have our first game over. Last night, um, Micah Kobacheski played Ike Pringle in the first round of the tournament. And he won, Micah Kobacheski won 59 to 48, shooting 55% free throw or field goal percentage and 50% three-point percentage making all six of his free throws. And the MVP of that game was Harden, scoring 25 points, five assists, and five rebounds. So interesting games. We have a lot of games going on today as the first round will get wrapped up by Friday. Um, here is the bracket. So as you can see, a lot of interesting matchups that we have, you know, PS4, Xbox, you know, eventually they will all meet. But, you know, interesting games that we have today, and uh, we will keep you posted. Thanks, Justin. Looks like the tournament is off to a great start. Siemens' own weatherman Josh has been hard at work every day to bring us the weather forecast we need to survive. Let's send it over to Josh with the weather after a quick commercial break. Hey, I'm gonna go home and watch some Disney Plus. See you tomorrow. Be safe, there's supposed to be a nasty storm. We're tracking round two of winter weather this week. Look at this. A much What's up, guys? It's your guy, Elias Mosier here, and hey, I got a great product for you. It's called SVTV Live Streaming, okay? We want to get this done so we can see all those sports like, go touchdown bowl, man. Like, get a strike, my dude, and golf. Like, you know, these great sports. If you want to see them live, all you got to do is go down and hit that subscribe button. Just Smash that subscribe button, guys. Don't forget to turn on that bell notification and like the video. Thanks, guy. See you later. Good afternoon. We saw widespread showers and thunderstorms earlier this morning. It was pretty loud for a couple of hours. No severe weather locally, but as we take a look at this week's rainfall total, we're now up to 0.82 inches. The good news is that we should be done with rain for not only the rest of today, but the rest of this week. So that is where we should stay. What's happening tonight is the start of spring. That comes at 10.50 p.m. But what's going to happen is a cold front will come through right around that time and drop our temperatures drastically. And this is what we're left with for tomorrow. Now, these are wind chills, but still, once you factor in the wind, it's going to feel like 19 degrees tomorrow morning at 8 and 9 o'clock. Cloudy skies as well with breezy winds will slowly climb to wind chills in the 30s as winds start to relax and the sun comes out, which should warm us up into the lower 40s for temperatures. That is tomorrow. It's going to be a big shock to the system after mid to upper 70s for today. But again, we are dry over the next few days. It's not until Sunday that we see at least a chance for a few scattered showers to move in from the south Sunday morning, and then they'll move out later in the day. So this is our next opportunity for rain coming in for the second half 
of the upcoming weekend. And taking a look at the SBTV seven day forecast, you can see that cool down, which is shown with highs in the 40s for both Friday and Saturday. That rainy chance on Sunday, 51 degrees. And then we start to warm back up once again. It looks like Monday night into early Tuesday, there could be another round of thunderstorms. In the longer range, here's how things are shaping up. We are predicting above average temperatures overall from March 26th through April 1st and near to slightly above average precipitation during that time frame. So that's your latest weather update. Now, Cade, back to you. Stuco and the coronation event is still going on, and today's challenge is to bake something and post about post it while tagging uh, Stuco in all caps for a chance to win a prize. Looks like it's my time to head out, Vikings. Make sure to tune into tomorrow to see what Mr. Monahan has to say about our future at Seaman. See you next week.